Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance, George and Anfisa. Let's watch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. okay, so he's saying he's sorry. That indicates that he did do something wrong and we're just not hearing about it. Or they edited it out. This show is so confusing, or this couple is so confusing, I don't understand what's happening. So they went to dinner. She said that she was only into him because he can spend a lot of money, and she lied to him about how much money he had, and if he didn't have money, she wouldn't want to be with him. And then we hear that she kicked him out of bed, and then he slept on the couch, and she kicked him out of there. He slept in his car in the garage, and... He say, how can I make, how can I fix this? And she says, you can't fix stupid. And we're not getting any indication as to what they fought about. Uh, I was like, was it anything? And he's like, what did I do? I don't understand what I did. And then uh, he arrives and he says, I'm sorry. So does that mean he did do something? And we're just not here. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll hear it. Can you stop acting like this? No. I came to talk. Well, I'm sorry the way that I acted. You just go crazy on me. Like you kicked me out. Like really? Like, was that necessary? So he says, I'm sorry for the way I acted. Okay, so he did some bad things. And he says, you just go crazy on me sometimes. And did you have to kick me out? He doesn't seem to be that devastated by it. And there seems to be some indication that Maybe it's her place? I don't understand. But, I don't know. Hopefully you'll get some detail. Because I don't know if we're looking at a situation where she was completely unreasonable or completely understandable. Because we're not getting any information about what happened. Yes. He tried to apologize, but he didn't even, like, he didn't even bring flowers or something, something cute, so. Like, why do you have to have an attitude for everything? Okay, so we're hearing that she wishes that he would have brought flowers or something cute. And because he didn't, then I don't want to work out our problems. All right, so we're seeing more materialism or maybe that she these gestures mean a lot to her. It sounds like that's true. What attitude? The attitude you're having and the attitude you're giving me. When Afisa gets mad, she doesn't always mean what she says, but I feel like I can't get through to her. Like things are not what always are you perfect. Talking about? Just you want it all your way. So I don't know what's happening here, but there are common enough scenarios that I've worked with and seen personally, honestly, where you someone is uh, with someone who is, for lack of a better term, mean and callous towards them. So, so I don't know if we're seeing this, but if George is reasonable or at least not terribly unreasonable and, and Fisa is much more the unreasonable person, then there's a cycle that I'll see. It's, you could argue it's an abusive cycle. You could argue that it's a, a shade off of an abusive cycle in which the emotionally volatile individual, the person who distorts a lot, the person with callousness, the person who exhibits lack of empathy, I'll just say that way, just the person who seems to exhibit, you know, ca you know lack of remorse, no empathy. And the other person will see glimpses from you know from the lack of empathy person that they do have empathy or they can approach it and so again as i've been talking about with this couple this drifting normalcy where if you're in a relationship with a very uh, callous person with a lack of empathy and you're in love with them you're motivated to give them the benefit of the doubt you're motivated to try to work things out and, and over time, you just become seduced in this idea that this is the way the world works. And and especially if you grew up with this in your childhood, that, yeah, this is normal. And you got to work in relationships. You got to work hard. And, you know, 
she's got issues and she, as he was saying she doesn't mean everything that she says you know she she says things but she doesn't really mean them and it's my job to try to work things out and when, and when I work really hard it usually does but the other person is giving almost no effort into the relationship and expects everything to be served on a on a silver platter for them and you get into this mode you know over time where it just becomes this constant pattern and one of the the various elements of this is you know if you're a recipient of this kind of relationship you know you're you're the one being mistreated you don't have time to stop and think what do i need should i be in a relationship like this what would other people do in a situation like this? Because you're in a constant state of trying to manage someone else. And the more I talk about it, the more it is emotional abuse, where you're scared to take your eye off the ball, uh, you know, essentially trying to manage them and trying to manage how they react to you. You're in a constant state of just like pleasing them. And, you know, like an analogy to this that I think, or an analogous situation that I think everyone can relate to would be say you're with your partner and and you're you have a good relationship and your partner just has a horrible day at work or a horrible day with their family or something and they come home and they're really upset and they're slamming doors and they're you know banging pots and pans into the sink and and you know them well enough to like whoa they're in a state right now like i shouldn't go over there and say hey knock it off because you know, don't tell someone like that to calm down. By the way, don't tell people like that to calm down. It doesn't usually help. You can certainly say, hey, you're scaring me, or I wish you would do that, or would you like to talk? But, you know, just say, calm down. You know, it doesn't usually work. Anyway, so you could see yourself in a situation like that, temporarily being in the state of just like, oh, I'm going to put my needs aside, and I'm going to attend to them. What do they need? Do they need space? Do they need me to just be there with them? And then you say so you go over there, you're talking to them, you're like, wow. You must have had a rough day. Yeah, I had a rough day. You know, they bark at you. And, you know, it would be rational in that situation to say, like, don't talk to me that way, but you're not going to do that right now because you know they're in a state, they're in a mood. And you'd be like, oh, okay, so what happened? Now, so you can imagine doing that for, you know, a couple hours or maybe the rest of the day. And then the next day you return to normal and your partner thanks you or apologizes or whatever. So we're all accustomed to that mode that we go into because we oh you know they're in a state so i better imagine if that's all the time <laughs> that's what this is like you're in a constant state of attending and managing and you're never able to relax and go okay i fixed the problem what do i need you know what if i have needs you know do they ever take care of me and it doesn't always work like that I'm trying to compromise with you as much as I can. You're not even comp compromising with me. So ridicule and contempt and mean behavior, childishness, mocking. It's pretty awful. If you don't like him, if you're not into him, if you're upset and you want to go home, all right. But I don't. at least we don't have any data to justify this kind of behavior. Maybe it is going on behind the scenes. Hey, deserving listeners, let's talk about erectile dysfunction. As a therapist, I've found that, along with psychological treatments, it's often helpful for my clients with erectile dysfunction to take medication. Well, that's where Roman comes in. Roman offers a discreet process from start to finish. You complete a secure online visit, then board-certified medical professionals determine which medication is appropriate and safe for you, and then they mail the medication straight to your door in a discreet package. So go to GetRoman.com slash Kirk today. If approved, you'll get $15 off your first order of erectile dysfunction treatment. That's GetRoman.com slash Kirk. GetRoman.com slash Kirk. Kirk. <laughs> you see, like, you think this is a game. And I'll return to an hypothesis that I've had from the beginning with this behavior that she is nervous because she's on camera. She was never into this relationship to begin with or whatever. Um, she thinks she can make money by being on the show and she's or she's really into him and she knows she needs to create drama. Like there's a whole other possibility here that 
this isn't a reflection of her personality and she's just a really bad actor you know because one of the things that I you know some of the cast members on the show will actually re- reach out to me in private and will have conversations not usually but occasionally I'll have a a long conversation with them and for the cast members that feel free to just tell me the honest truth about what's going on behind the scenes uh, I won't go into details and maybe y'all know the details because there are a fair amount of cast members from a variety of reality TV shows that will disclose what happens behind the scenes but you know there's there's a possibility that for example even with this scene that it already happened and they just keep replaying it because they want more scene you know like the producers might say okay that was good we'll do it again start over go outside come back in let's start over and have the whole conversation over again like those kinds of things happen on this show and so you could imagine that among one of those takes one of the cast members like man this is just kind of funny that we're doing this all over again <laughs> and one person is better at doing it the 10th time and the other person is is more not then later on the editors are like ooh this is good it makes her look like a psychopath like i'm just going to say that there's a lot of possibilities as to what actually is happening but i will comment on what i see as a red flag for things so y'all can look for that in your real life cuz presumably you're not on a reality tv show in your real life I'm trying to tell you that whatever it is. You've been acting like an idiot since I came here. Just want to go home now. Uh, I just need to stop reacting, honestly. <laughs> it's like verbal abuse, mocking, sarcasm, rolling of the eyes, insults, combativeness, lack of reasonableness. Uh, I mean, just listen to that tone. I mean, it, when I hear kids have that tone, it's like nails on a chalkboard. But from an adult, let's, re- let's rewind that to, <laughs> to be masochistic. You, that whatever You've been acting like an idiot since I came here. Just want to go home now. And even if this is all fake, you know, because one of the things that we'll often say, and I've actually talked with cast members about this as well, like they'll say, well... What was really happening was different than what you saw on the show, but I did do those things on camera, and I did stand by them at the time. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that I didn't do those things, because I did, but there was mo- a lot more to the story than what you saw, you know, that kind of stuff. So even if there is this humongous other side of the story that we don't know about, she did just say that you've been acting like it he's been trying and you could argue it's not a very good try but at least he's not being insulting abusive name calling contempt he's like how can we fix this i'm sorry he said that twice there's a world in which there's actually very little reason for him to apologize and yet he said he's sorry there's a world in which he did something completely horrific who knows they were in bed together god knows what was happening I guess along those lines, there's a world in which she doesn't want to talk about it because she doesn't want to humiliate him. Like she hates him, but doesn't hate him that much. Or it was embarrassing. Or she does want to talk about it, but the show is like, this is kind of a family-friendly show, so we we can't have you talk about what actually happened. I don't know. But I will say that that behavior that she just exhibited is, is awful. And I think that one of the things, who knows about her? Maybe she's a saint and he's not i don't know but i I will say this because if anyone ever talks to you this way do not allow this to move your normalcy over be able to say even if you're stuck in a relationship at the very least a part of your mind should be able to look at that and say that's not good behavior that's not fair it's childish it's undifferentiated it's abusive there's no reason for it there's other ways to talk about things You've been an idiot since you came in here, you know. Get away from me. Before I moved here, I thought it's going to be nice living with George. I expected that he would do some romantic gestures, like 
give me some small gifts like flowers or something, but he never did, not even once. I think it's easier for George because he's in his country, he has his family here, he has his work, and now he has... Okay, we heard similar statements from Larissa with Colt about, you know, the flowers and, okay, you know, I, I could see a world in which people come from a culture in which there's a, a a lot of weight put on stuff like that. In the United States, we certainly have a, we have a principle like that and a, and there's different pockets of culture in the United States, but I would, I would take a guess and say that there's less of that in the States, you know, less of the kind of dating and the kind of gestures you might see from men in the fifties, you know, like in the fifties, I, I don't know that at least the, the TV shows, the guy would show up with flowers and candy. He would always open the door for her. He, he was a gentleman all the time. And maybe for her, that's a factor. I can't imagine that being the only thing, though, in terms of what's going on. It's me, so he gets to have everything, and I'm the one making sacrifices. Did we just get over this argument already? No. I will say, though, if this is a, an accurate representation of their communication, like, nothing is being communicated. <laughs> it's him, like, saying, let's talk. And she's like, you're an idiot. Well, how can we work this out? Well, you're an idiot. I don't want to be with you. Well, how can we? I don't understand what I do. Well, you're an idiot. I have deep contempt for you. Like, that's not conflict resolution. I, just, I, I, I feel like I, I... Is that obvious? I feel like it's obvious. Is it, it's probably obvious to you. Can I give you a hug? No. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No indication she wants you to hug her. She literally... I'm glad you asked. She said, why did you ask? If, she, if she's... If you ask then you're acknowledging the possibility is no, and when she says no, then don't. 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 Someone doesn't... There's zero indication that she wants... Don't. Don't ever do that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Have I ever been as triggered as I have in this situation? It is truly awful to watch. <laughs> it is. Uh, I mean, it's on so many levels. It's like cringy, like to the max. And he is forcing himself on an unwilling participant, trying to kiss her. She is asserting her boundaries by putting her hand up and and not that violently saying no so what are you doing oh uh. i'm sorry stop stop i'm sorry i thought if we were to what are you doing what is happening no don't Things would go back to normal. But now I'm afraid I'm gonna lose her. You can give me a right to the airport. When um, I'm done packing. You're afraid you're going to lose her. <laughs> you, I don't know if you ever had her, but either way, you she's she's already gone. You've already lost. So, you know. <sighs> I just wish she would get on a plane and go home and this <laughs> the end of this. I've been here for six weeks and George has done nothing. No proposal, no ring, no bag. Can we just make out? No, we cannot. What did you do to make out? Nothing yet. No? But I'm sure... I'll talk to you when you're ready. He needs to prove that he loves me. Because right now, I don't even see why would I get married to him. So many weird things. I, I just need to stop reacting because it's got to be obvious, right? So she says... He hasn't done anything nice to me, and all I've seen is him pandering to her. That's all we've seen on camera anyway. Let's look for a wedding dress. Let's look for a wedding ring. And then she asks for 
I'm pretty sure a calculated move as to the the most expensive thing in the whole store knowing that he can't afford it or doesn't want to allocate half of his savings to that one thing I don't know and no proposal he's not nice to me uh, did, so that implies somehow that if he had roses or he did buy the ring like everything would be great right now uh bye Mm. Okay. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.